Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kim Stemshorn, and I'm the coordinator of the Smart Commute Program at the City of Toronto. And I'm happy to be here today for the Live Green at Home series, the final of three commuter cycling series workshops. At the Environment and Energy Division, we deliver programs, grants, incentives, and resources to engage the community in helping to transform TO, our climate action strategy in Toronto, and to accelerate the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions in Toronto. My program, Smart Commute, works to curb traffic congestion and reduce greenhouse gas emissions through the promotion of sustainable modes of transportation, such as carpooling, public transit, cycling, and walking. Throughout the pandemic, Active TO has been a major milestone in Toronto for supporting and prioritizing sustainable transportation for both travel and exercise. Our topic today, Bike Share Toronto has greatly expanded over the last year, making traveling by bike even more accessible in Toronto. In 2020, Bike Share Toronto's network increased by 625 stations and 6,850 bikes. And in fall 2020, Bike Share Toronto rolled out an amazing electric bike or e bike pilot program, making active and sustainable travel possible to even more neighborhoods in Toronto. Today, September 30th, is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in Canada, a somber day of healing and reflection as we move forward. Truth justice and reconciliation in our lives. With this, I'll give a land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on as the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, and the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many first, uh, diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. We'll be recording this workshop. We'll be talk, uh, taking questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A section on the right-hand side of your screen, so please enter your questions there. We'll allow some time at the end of the presentation with our guest speaker, Christina, and we'll answer your questions at that time. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Christina Valent from Bike Share Toronto. Christina is a senior planner at Bike Share Toronto with more than eight years of experience in active transportation and cycling planning and design. Please join me in welcoming today's guest, Christina Voland. I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Kim, for the warm welcome. I'll go ahead and share my screen. everyone should be able to see my screen and good afternoon to everyone uh, and thank you for being here today and really attending the session. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today and to be part of the webinar, webinar series. So today I'm going to be talking about bike share Toronto okay, good. Oh. and to give you a bit of an intro into bike share and a brief look at our history. Um, and then I'll get into some details in terms of how bike share works the system and the equipment equipment, and some stats around Bike Share Toronto. And then I'll be giving you an overview of some exciting initiatives like the corporate membership, as well as what's in store next for Bike Share Toronto. So Bike Share Toronto is uh, operated by the Toronto Parking Authority or TPA, and we are an agency of the city of Toronto. So at the core, uh, bike share is a service that provides bikes for use on a short term basis. Um, so really to be used on trips that are 30 minutes or 45 minutes and less uh, and really bringing people from point A to point B. And really bike share Toronto is a mobility service allowing users uh, to bike as part of their overall trip uh, and really integrate with transit as well as TPA parking services. So in terms of our history, um, I won't go through every bullet and every year on the slide, uh, but we have reached a number of milestones over the last 10 years. Um, so I think it's really important to focus on uh, where we started and where we are today. So in 2011, uh, Bike Share started with 80 stations and 1,000 bikes. Uh, and at that time, we were known as Big C Toronto. 
And then in 2013, um, Bixie Toronto was renamed to Bike Share Toronto. Uh, and really from uh, 2011 to 2013 and onwards, we really have been growing and expanding our network. Um, so in 2020, the network expanded to 625 stations and nearly 6,800 bikes. Um, and really when we put that into perspective uh, and look at other cities, um, Montreal has a system of uh, nearly 9,000 bikes. Uh, London has uh, 11,500 bikes. Um, and really uh, uh, the, the average for the top five cities in North America have an average of 740 stations. So we're doing pretty good. <laughs> and uh, as part of today's presentation, um, I'll be outlining our successes as well as our plans for 2022. So on any given day, um, there are over 100 people supporting bike share. That could include the core bike share team within the Toronto Parking Authority to our operator at Shift Transit, as well as our infrastructure and IT support through PBSC Urban Solutions. Um, we also have a number of business partners and other partners through the various levels of government and agencies like Metrolinks, um, which have provided funding support over the past years. So as part of Bike Share, there are two different membership options. Uh, the first is an annual membership, so users can purchase an annual 30 membership or an annual 45 me membership which allows unlimited 30 minutes or 45 minute trips um, for one full year. The other membership is a uh, casual pass. Uh, so really this allows users to take unlimited 30 minute trips within a 70, 72 hour or three day period, a 24 hour period, as well as the single trip up to 30 minutes. And in terms of using bike share, it's, it's quite easy. So the first step is to buy a pass, which can either be done at a station booth on the mobile PBSC app um, or online on the website. Once the pass is purchased, a bike can be undocked using a five digit code that is provided uh, or using our membership card. From there, you can access uh, a bike and use it for a 30 minute or 45 minute trip, depending on the membership type, um, at which point at the end of your trip, you will return the bike uh, to any station in the city. It does not need to be the station that you took the bike out of, um, any station in the city. So I had already mentioned the size of our system. Uh, bike share currently has um, 6,850 bikes, as well as uh, 625 stations. Uh, but it's also helpful to visually see it and, and really the area that we cover within the city, uh, including the two pilot areas, uh, one in North York and the other one in Scarborough. So in terms of the bike share station, um, there really are four main components. Um, that would be the kiosk or the pay terminal, docking points, uh, the bikes themselves, um, and finally the ad panel uh, at the end of the station. So in terms of the pay terminal or kiosk, um, these are uniform modular units uh, that look the same across all stations in the city. The entire station is powered by solar panels um, that are on top of the pole that you see there in the photo, uh, which provide enough power to control the kiosk itself, as well as all the bike docks and the bikes at the station. Uh, some stations don't have a kiosk, uh, and this is what we would call a smart station. So in place of a kiosk, uh, what we would see is another bike dock at that point. Um, and then there would be solar panels installed at the top of the ad panel, uh, which would in similar fashion, power all the bike docks and the bikes.
in terms of uh, the docking point, these are also uh, uniform modular units that, the, that look the same across all stations in the city. Um, the docks have a simple and easy to use interface so users can use their five digit code to unlock a bike um, or alternatively insert their membership card to undock a bike. Uh, and each dock has a front end protector uh, that locks the bike into place once the bike is docked or returned to the station. So in addition to uh, the equipment and the bike share system itself, it's also important for us to know who is using bike share so that we can better understand customer demand um, and ultimately enhance the user experience. So one of the key highlights uh, that we've seen using the data collected is that while commuter traffic to and from work has really dropped significantly in 2020 due to the pandemic, um, those using bike share to run errands, shop, eat, or even exercise has really grown substantially. Um, so even though we've seen these trends, uh, our expectation is that we will see an increase again in people using bike share to go to and from work in the fall and into 2022 as things are opening and as employers are returning back to work. The 2020 data collected also shows us areas that have the highest ridership. So some of these communities include the waterfront communities, uh, the Churchy Young Corridor, Fashion District, King West, Parkdale, and of course Toronto. Um, and I mean, it's no surprise that these areas also represent some of the communities with the dense, densest um, bike share stations within the area. Um, but we've seen that other parts of the city uh, have begun to see a, a good uptick in ridership as a network has expanded and grown over the years into new areas where stations were not there previously. And uh, this is something we are quite proud of. Um, and something we wanted to highlight, um, membership has grown from 40,000 when we started in 2011 to over 360,000 as of 2020. Um, and also the number of trips have grown from uh, around 400,000 in 2011 uh, to over 2.9 million as of uh, 2020. So we really had been seeing uh, membership numbers increase as well as ridership numbers increase. Uh, and our goal is to continue increasing the number of memberships as the network expands. Um, and it, it really goes to show that bike share is a mobility service and, and really a convenient and fun way for people to get around the city and to commute around the city. A few weeks ago, uh, Bike Share Toronto also launched a corporate membership, uh, which will be offered until the end of this year. So companies who enroll uh, as a corporate partner with Bike Share Toronto will have the opportunity to offer their employees a 20% discount uh, on either a annual 30 or annual 45 membership. Uh, and to date, uh, we have more than 20 companies who have signed up for the corporate membership. And really this ranges from uh, small size companies to medium sized companies to large companies. So it's really exciting to see the uh, variety of companies who have uh, partnered with Bike Share Toronto and who are eager to, to offer this to their employees. Um, and the corporate membership comes at, as, comes at a really good time when we are supporting Toronto's return to office campaign and really looking at cost effective uh, and convenient ways to get people commuting again.
And so as we look forward, uh, Toronto Bike Share is focused on operations, uh, user demand, and customer service. So in 2022, um, we will be starting a four-year growth plan. Our last growth plan was completed in 2016, and that plan really guided how Bike Share Toronto expand and grow over a um, four-year period up until 2020. So now that the plan has been implementing, uh, implemented, we're, we're looking to develop another plan to guide our next four years uh, until 2025. We'll also be looking at opportunities to expand the bike share network. So really looking at opportunities to invest in stations along or near transit corridors, uh, putting stations in, into new development areas. So supporting not just current population, but also future population and that future demand for uh, mobility options. Uh, and really supporting user demand in, in high employment areas uh, and ensuring that people have options uh, as part of their daily commute and to get from point A to point B. And finally, uh, really looking to become a customer servic centric organization. Um, so an example of that would be two new annual membership programs that we launched this year. Um, one being the annual 45 membership uh, and the other one being the corporate membership. Um, another example of this would be a annual rate review. So we haven't done, Bike Share Toronto has not done a, uh, a rate review since 2017. So we'll be undertaking a, a review to make sure that we are providing a system that meets uh, customer needs and really a, a system that is accessible to all people across the city. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, I have my contact information up there. Uh, feel free to reach out and uh, I'll also share my contact info with Kim and Chapter. So much, Christina. That was uh, an amazing uh, intro to Bike Share Toronto. And I, I've had a Bike Share membership for a couple of years, and I, I just took so much from that. So thank you for that. Um, for for our audience, please please use the Q and A um, feature on your screen. We'd love to hear your questions. Uh, we've got a Bike Share. Toronto expert on the line, so feel free to type in your questions and we'll be sure to have them answered. Um, Christina, could you, um, you just, you just landed on sort of an inspiring last slide where we can, we can learn, you know, the, the future vision for Bike Share Toronto. Can you speak to uh, ways Toronto residents or visitors of Toronto or just, you know, fans of Bike Share Toronto can, can help support Bike Share Toronto? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there are a few ways you can start to use Bike Share Toronto. Uh, we have a website, bikeshareToronto.com. So you can go on there and check out which stations are close to you uh, and available bikes at those stations. Um, so if you want to grab a bike, you can see what's available near you and, and hop on and, and really give it a try. Uh, the other way you can find available stations and bikes near you is to download the PBSC app. Um, and it'll have a, a similar layout to our online website where you can see available stations and bikes near you and easily uh, unlock bikes with the app. So it's quite convenient. So uh, you can go to any station near you, unlock a bike and, and really try out Bike Share Toronto. That's great. And are, is Bike Share Toronto on social media as well? Yes, we are. Yeah, we are on social media. So you can follow us, see what we're up to. Uh, we we uh, spotlight different uh, stations, different valet stations on the weekend, as well as um, user stories. So it's a great way to stay connected and see what we're up to. Okay, hang on. What is a valet station? Oh, <laughs> so a valet station. Uh, we have these on the weekend occasionally where uh, members of the Bike Share Toronto team are out there and uh, will actually 
dock your bike for you because sometimes uh, destinations on the weekend are so popular we just don't have enough docks for them uh, at the physical station so we'll have uh, a reserve team out there who are essentially returning your bike for you yeah yeah so think of it as like a, a valet service for your bike <laughs> That's amazing. I think I saw some when I was out on an active TO route that wasn't in the downtown core. That's right. Yeah, awesome. Very, very cool. Okay, so we, uh, we received a question in the Q&A panel. What do you feel is the biggest hurdle to increasing ridership? That's a great question. I think um, really ensuring that there are um, stations where people are living to make sure that those stations are visible but also accessible uh, we hear sometimes that people would love to try bike share uh, but it's just either not close to where they live so they feel like it might not be a convenient option or perhaps it's not close to uh, where they want to go so in similar fashion um, not convenient as uh, as a commuting purpose uh, so as part of our four-year growth plan, we really want to take a look at areas where bike share is currently not in so we can expand the network to those areas and, and really overcome that obstacle uh, and really make bike share accessible to everyone in the city so it does become a convenient um, and easy option for people to use. And have you seen um, a, a change in, in uptake and in, in different neighborhoods in Toronto with the, the rollout of the e-bike pilot program, the electric bike pilot program? Yeah, definitely. Um, so there are about 300 bikes in the system right now. Uh, so uh, I, I mean, they're throughout the city. So I, am, I haven't seen uh, one particular area that has a greater uptake in e-bikes. They're sort of throughout the network. Um, but w what we have heard from customers is that uh, they do appreciate having the e-bikes, especially biking up a hill. Uh, so really, it's um, it's become a great way for people to get back into biking, but also overcome some of those uh, long distances or some of those like physical constraints of getting up a hill. So it's uh, uh, it's been wonderful and it's been really positive to hear from customers using e-bikes. Yeah, definitely biking north in the city. I could definitely use a little electric assist getting up the hills. Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, likewise. <laughs> yeah. And how fast do they go? I'm so curious. Like, will I be <laughs> racing through the city? No, 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 no racing. Uh, they go up to 25 kilometers per hour uh, and a full charge on an e bike. Get a user uh, 70 kilometers out of a full charge. Yeah, so it's a. Uh, it's quite a distance. <laughs> and do I, as the rider, have to charge it? No. So e-bikes can be returned to any station across the city. Um, you don't need to return them to uh, any particular station. The, the solar panels on a station will charge an e-bike. Yeah. <laughs> and what we also do is um, uh, we also collect some e-bikes at nighttime and bring them back to our facilities to, to charge them even faster. So, um, yeah, if you get an e-bike, you can return it to any station. That's great. And are there any plans to expand the program? I know you said there's 300 out there with the pilot. Yeah, so since it is a pilot, we are going to be analyzing and evaluating the data after a certain time period. Um, so. We don't know yet is the short answer. We still need to uh, evaluate and see the success of the program, but we would like to uh, see it grow and see it expand. Great. Um, so we, we have a question in the chat asking, so this actually coincides really nicely with, with our conversation about electric bikes, e-bikes, and being able to commute longer distances with at greater ease. Um, so uh, someone's asking with those longer trips, what happens if you ride, uh, if, if you take out a bike and, and your ride happens to be longer than 30 minutes, 30 or 45 minutes? Yeah, so um, I believe there's a function on the app where you can go and you can notify uh, the app essentially that you are 
uh, not going to make the 30 or 45 minute window and I believe there's some leeway there but I'm, I, I don't quite recall what that time is um, but we do encourage people that before they go out sort of plan the trip so they are within that 30 minute or 45 minute period. Um, another option what users can do is that if they know they're part into the ride but they're not quite at their final destination yet they could always um, return the bike at a station and undock it again just to make sure that they're within that 30 minute window or that 45 minute window so they don't incur charge fees. That's, that's a great tip um, for, for extending your commute if you're headed a long way. Do you have any suggestions on um, wayfinding and how I can how we can better navigate the system. I know you mentioned there's a few options. There's an app. Um, yeah, so I would say an, an app is, the, the app is a great way to see what stations are nearby. Um, also at the stations, there is a system map. So when you get there, you can also check out nearby stations as well as um, other cycling routes. Um, that'll help you plan your route. Uh, so there are a few options uh, options between the app, um, add panel at a station to look at by stations and sort of cycling routes that exist, uh, as well as the, the website to see what stations are, are nearby you. Great. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of resources for, for wayfinding and figuring out the network. And, as with any trip, I feel like the more you do it, the more familiar you'll be. You'll have your own, your favorite docking station you like to go to in your neighborhood when you're by your destination. Yes, yes. Yeah. Have you heard any great anecdotes and, and testimonials from users? Like what, what are some things you've heard from, from different users in terms of experience and what they use it for? Yeah, I, I would say what we've really seen um, this past year and into 2020 is that um, the number of people using bike share for uh, like recreational trips, leisure and exercise um, has really increased. Um, I mean, during the height of pandemic when things were closed and people were looking for recreational activities, uh, we really did receive a lot of feedback in terms of people using bike share in ways they hadn't before. Um, it really was in bike share to explore the city. So it was really wonderful to hear um, how bike share was uh, was really embraced during during COVID and during the pandemic. And uh, you touched on this earlier a bit, but also in our social media, we do highlight uh, user stories and user experience. So it's really it's really nice to see what others have to say about bike share and, and really their experience using bike share. Love the feel good story. That's, that's really great to hear. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> um, we have a question in the chat. How is Bike Share Toronto influencing the development of the city's bike infrastructure? That's a great question. So uh, we do coordinate and work with city staff and initiatives like Active TO, Cafe TO to ensure that uh, bike share stations can be along or really close to the corridor. Uh, we do want to support multimodal trips, active transportation, cycling, so really providing users with options to use cycling infrastructure and really promote bike share along these corridors is a, is a, a, a big thing for us. And we want to make sure that uh, we are coordinating with city staff to make sure that Bike Share Toronto um, is, is along those corridors and that uh, there's an option for users. If, if anyone wants a bike share docking station closer to them or, or their destinations, do you ever take requests for, for docking stations or an expansion for expansions of the network? Yeah, so Bike Share Toronto, we do receive requests um, at each station. Um, there is uh, an email customer service at Bike Share. Uh, so we do receive feedback and input from users. So it's actually, it's been very helpful and very, uh, um, very, very good to understand where people are biking, where they want to see it, so we can better understand user demand and really enhance that user experience. Uh, so yeah, we, we do have that customer service email that 
uh, people can use and reach out to with their info. Terrific. Thanks. Um, and for someone, we, in the chat, we received a question about um, does bike share operate in the winter months? We and <laughs> two prong question do you operate in the winter months? And um, uh, do you have any tips on winter cycling? Getting through those colder months and a little bit unpredictable weather. <laughs> Good question. So we do operate in the winter months. We operate 365, 24-7. Um, and I guess perhaps from personal experience, biking in the winter, um, make sure you dress appropriately. Um, weatherproof. I'm, I think anyways, like weatherproof pants and weatherproof shoes go a long way. There's nothing worse than wet feet <laughs> on a cold day. Um, and really just taking your time. I would say taking your time and, and uh, not rushing to where you're going and yeah, just taking the time on the bike. Great. And will we see, do the e-bike, does the e-bike program continue through the winter as well? Yeah, absolutely. As, yep. um, our entire network, e-bikes and traditional bikes operate uh, 365, 24-7. So the e-bikes will still be out there in the winter. That's amazing. Um, you mentioned a number of um, organizations and companies you work with to, to deliver the program in your presentation. Can you speak to what it's like to upkeep nearly 7,000 bikes? <laughs> that is such an undertaking. Um, curious to know what the process is. Tell us, tell us how the sausage is made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bike Share Toronto is a big operation. So, I mean, in addition to the our bike share team at TPA. We also have our operators, Schick Transit, um, and our infrastructure and IT support, PBSC Urban Solutions. Um, so really it's about making sure that day to day our operations are solid. And also um, as part of our, I guess longer, I say longer term, but you know, like not the day to day, making sure that um, all the equipment, including stations, bikes, docks, are obtained regularly, Aimed regularly, um, audited regularly, um, really to ensure that things are in working order um, and that the equipment is readily available, so usable for users. Um, so, really, it's a coordination amongst uh, the bike share team with our operators to make sure that things are running smoothly and that uh, things are working as they should. Um, ooh, good question from the chat. Um, speaking of our, our partners to deliver the program, are there are there any plans to merge uh, bike share memberships with other transit agencies like TTC and Go that use Presto? I uh, I'm not certain myself, uh, but I could uh, dig into that with some of my senior management and Kim. I can pass along any information I I, I find. Sure. Great. Yeah, that's a, a great suggestion. We're um, better for integration and, and, and only makes it easier for the, the rider experience. Although Bike Share Toronto does some amazing things, as we discussed, you can, there's a card if you, if you're, if you prefer carrying a card, there's the app. Um, you mentioned a five digit code. Where do they access? Where do they get this five digit code? And you punch it in on the, on the, yeah, so the if, uh, if, if you purchase a pass um, at the kiosk itself, or even on the mobile app, um, let's start with the station. If you purchase the uh, a pass at a station, you'll get a five-digit code. And so you use that five-digit code, and when you go to a dock, there's a interface with three numbers, one, two, three. So whatever your five-digit code is, you just enter it into that bike dock, and it, it'll unlock the bike for you. The same thing with the app. Uh, you can either, the, the app will give you a five digit code, which you can use in the same fashion, or um, you can scan the QR code on the bike to unlock the bike. So a few options using the five digit code, either through the, the kiosk or the app, or using the QR code uh, on the bike through the app. Great, so customizable, like you can choose your option. That's really great. And I think in the past, I heard you can also use, or I think I might have even done it in the past, a credit card as well at the kiosk. So if yes. I don't have a phone handy. Yeah, that's right. So that's how you would pay for the pass. You would use your credit card uh, to purchase the pass at the kiosk. 
Uh, so once you purchase the pass, you would get a five-digit code. What was that five-digit code at the bike dock? Great, nice and easy. Um, we had some longtime bike share users <laughs> in attendance here, and we received a question asking um, or mentioning you used to be able to buy bike share passes through the transit app. Will that feature return at some point? This user found it very convenient. Yeah, so we have transitioned to uh, a new app, PBSC app. So we are constantly looking at ways to optimize the app and uh, enhance the app. So we don't have any, uh, I guess, solid answers now in terms of integration with other apps, uh, but we are constantly looking at trying to improve that app and really make it as easy as possible to use for users. Great, and then if, if folks have feedback, they can, I, I imagine they can write the customer service email that you mentioned. If they, That's right, yes. Terrific. Um, received a question back to, to user experience on Bike Share Toronto. What happens when a bike is stolen or not returned? Does enforcement track the bikes? Yes, so we do have a, a system essentially where we track all bikes and you can see the status of the bikes. So um, I'm knocking on wood, hopefully <laughs> this uh, this doesn't happen. But yes, we are able to monitor bikes, where they are, uh, what their status is. So we do have that, that uh, availability to us. Great. And um, we received a question about um, employment opportunities. Uh, would Bike Share Toronto or Bike Share Toronto benefit from a high school or co-op student? Or where, where can generally we find job posting uh, for yeah. Bike Share Toronto? Yeah, so Bike Share Toronto, we post our jobs on the Toronto Parking Authority because we are housed under Toronto Parking Authority. So um, yeah, job postings are posted under Toronto Parking Authority and uh, I, I would encourage people to visit the website to see what opportunities are there right now. Thanks, Christina. That's that's great. Um, so uh, on that on that inspiring note for future opportunities <laughs> to get involved with Bike Share Toronto, uh, I will conclude our workshop here. As Christina mentioned in her presentation, Bike Share Toronto recently launched a corporate membership program for reduced cost memberships uh, that um, employers can offer to their employees. The Smart Commute Toronto program is offering an even deeper discount for Bike Share Toronto memberships at 25% off the normal rate. Uh, if you're interested in bringing Bike Share Toronto to your workplace and inspiring your colleagues to commute more sustainably, reach out to Smart Commute Toronto staff at scommute at toronto.ca and be sure to visit smartcommutetoronto.ca for more information on the Smart Commute program. I'd like to thank Christina and all of Bike Share Toronto for joining us today. I'd also like to thank my amazing colleagues, Candace Keast and Adam Testify for putting this all together. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you, our attendees, for joining us today. Have a great day and happy cycling. Thank you, everyone.